Hi, everyone. So you can go next slide. So um, I'm Courtney Kremet, and I'm the collection strategist for science and engineering and research data at MIT Libraries. And I'm also on the MIT Libraries negotiations team. So to complement what these publishers have shared so far, I'm going to speak about what libraries need from publishers before and after these new OA models are put in place. Next slide. MIT libraries negotiations take a team-based approach uh, focusing on principles rather than positions using the MIT framework for publisher contracts. This framework was written and released in October of 2019 uh, by the faculty committee of the library system, and it's been endorsed by over 200 organizations, groups, and libraries. The publisher framework is a mechanism for ensuring that scholarly research is open to all and that authors retain the rights that they can share as they see fit. The framework represents principles and values that align with the mission and vision of MIT. MIT Libraries has open access agreements with all three publishers that have spoken today's panel so far, and these agreements align with many aspects of the framework. So after the OA agreements are finalized through the negotiations team, we have an OA workflow team that works directly with uh, the publishers and the MIT authors to enact the agreement for our community. So my perspective today on what libraries need before and after these new OA models are put in place is from my experience on the negotiations team and working with colleagues that support the open access workflows for authors. Next slide. So before new open access models are put in place, libraries and publishers, libraries need publishers to be willing to experiment and to be flexible. So not every library can fit into a cookie cutter OA model. While the publisher has a really clear idea of what their model is, the libraries are coming from uh, varying budgets, they have varying author publication behaviors, and they have varying open access goals. So it's important for a publisher to really think about the library that they're working with and the specific needs of that particular library. And, and libraries can do the same. MIT Libraries has our own very specific open access goals. And in some cases, the publishers just aren't there yet, but we're willing to experiment while we both work together to get there. For example, we need cost transparency and um, some publishers aren't ready to do that prior to the Plan S transparency framework deadline of 2022. Maybe a publisher would be willing to share the draft of the work as they meet that deadline. Maybe a publisher isn't sure about auto deposit. Um, we think that an auto deposit pilot experiment is a great way to examine how green OA impacts subscription revenue. If publishers don't have an open access model that suits that library at that time, maybe there's a way to take a chunk of subscription money and transfer it to open access initiatives within the publisher's organization. So there's no, you know, one size fits all OA model and, you know, experimentation and flexibility is needed, but the bonus is that these collaborations build partnerships. Next slide. As I mentioned, we need publishers to provide transparency in the price of the OA model. With the Plan S transparency framework deadline on the horizon, that may be easy for publishers soon, but for now we have found that it's a tough conversation and it you know, leads to us asking a lot of questions and having a lot of meetings, looking underneath the hood of a publisher's financial organization and it often feels like we're asking for a utility bill. But this aspect is really crucial to MIT libraries. And we're, we're willing to pay for the services provided by publishers, but we need to understand how the fees are determined and what the services are costing us. Next slide. We also need information and about, about a publisher's commitment to equity. You know, OA models create uh, divide between authors who can pay to publish and authors who can't because they're not well-funded or affiliated uh, with well-funded institutions. 
And so MIT Libraries wants to see publishers participating in initiatives that seek to eliminate that divide and create a scholarly communication landscape that isn't based on the ability to pay for open access per se. And an OA APC waiver program for authors is a great way to participate in equity, but we need information about the waiver program. So for instance, how many authors have they assisted? Uh, how many APC dollars have been contributed? How many papers are now open access that wouldn't otherwise be open? Um, we also are interested in the author's experience with the waiver program. Uh, what are the what is the publisher doing to reduce the participation barriers? Is it easy for the author to find out about the waiver program? But participation in equity doesn't have to just be about a waiver program. Maybe there's a cultural change in the organization that contributes to supporting scholarly communication equity. Has the publisher signed on to Dora? Have editorial policies changed in order to help minimize the career impacts that women in STEM will be facing due to impacts of coping with the pandemic? We want to hear about all of these activities, and um, we're, we're interested in creative ideas um, that, that are happening in that space. Next slide. Before new models are put in place, we also need publishers to provide accurate author publication data. So we've heard all three publishers talking about this. This is not uh, new information, um, but it's important for the libraries to see the data um, that's behind this because the publication data is um, what the fee for the open access model is based on usually. So it's really important for the publisher to share the data with us so that we can review it. Um, this has been a really important process for MIT because we're in such a research dense area and we have researchers that have multiple affiliations, um, multiple organizations and schools. And you know those affiliations, if they're misrepresented or misunderstood, um, it could impact our fees. So the ability to review like the corresponding or contributing um, author data is really important to us. Next slide. Many of these new models have workflows that impact library services and staff. And so it's really important that we get a clear explanation and agreement about what is expected of the libraries, particularly staff or infrastructure buildup um, before the model is put in place so that we can set that that staff time aside and we can prep those, um, those people. So does the publisher need a lot of help developing the author workflow or is it already set? If there's auto deposit included, uh, do we need to connect the two technical teams uh, to identify any obstacles? So next I'm gonna move on to what we need from publishers after the OA model is put in place. So after new open access models are put in place, Libraries need publishers to make clarity a priority when developing author workflows. Workflows with really concise and clear instructions, fewer steps and clicks, and fewer emails are best. And that's directly from our authors. We also need to see the workflow firsthand so that we know what the authors will experience. Allowing library staff, staff a direct view into the author workflow, either through a screenshot or access to the system, enables us to better support the author and may impact the success of the model. We, we can then anticipate questions and build up our author facing support like FAQs. Next slide. We also need to have the license terms be the default option in the author workflow. If we agreed to OA by CC BY, we want that to be the default license choice the author sees in the author workflow, in addition to an option to choose something else. Next slide. And while we're given this direct view of the author workflow, we need the ability to suggest changes to the publisher. We know our community well and can identify places in the workflow that can cause confusion. 
The same can be said for any public facing information the author may read about their institution's OA publishing options on the publisher website. Next slide. And lastly, ongoing communication from the publisher about the use of the OA model is really important to libraries. Receiving reports or getting access to a dashboard which shows st uh, statistics and general transparency, it lets us know that the OA agreement is working and that authors are able to navigate the author workflow and then eventually publish OA, which is the goal of the agreement. So this information is also helpful to determine papers, to identify papers um, to deposit for our local copy. Next slide. So there's the before and after, and it may take a lot of work and a lot of meetings and a lot of sometimes tough lines of questioning and um, Lots of uh, lots of work, but these new models, I, I think, are successful and better for it when libraries and publishers work to understand each other's needs and um, provide clarity and perspective to each other. So thanks.